Hello everyone and now welcome to game two in the series here on Antigua Shipyard. Yeah, game two. Slivko versus Bly on Antigua Shipyard. This will be a cross spawn location as this does appear to be a tournament tournament edition of this map. Meaning that both players know where the other player already is. Unfortunately though, since it is forced cross spawns, no player will have a have a clear advantage over the other opponent as we now see Slivko and, and Bly deviating just a little bit Slivko opting to go for an overlord at 9 meanwhile Bly going to a full 10 over 10 and now training up that overlord so that means that Bly will most likely be sitting on a fair amount of um, minerals for quite some time there is that extractor trick and now going into two additional or 11 over 10 he might even double extractor trick if he would like but i don't think that that is absolutely necessary as we are going to see bly now continue to train up more and more drones overlords are in position to scout out their opponent ben q will we see perhaps a 15 hatchery come in from um slivko and will we see a 15 hatchery come in from bly slivko in game one playing very very well was actually able to fake his opponent into thinking that he was going into an economic game and instead went into a very very heavy roach count instead of that nine additional drones that Bly had now if Bly was able to get a return on investment on his drones that would have worked out better for him but Slivko knowing the strike when the iron is hot was able to break down that front door um, of a couple of spine crawlers, take down those banelines, and then pretty much finish off everything that was at the natural expansion. Slivko now making his way out, both sides building near simultaneous builds at this point, drones, spawning pool, and hatchery. Yeah, just a difference of a couple of seconds between these two players. And the question will be, will we perhaps spot a third base? Bly now coming in with this overlord actually parking it inside his opponent's base underneath the hatchery knowing that there is not going to be a queen for quite some time. Meanwhile Slivko has spotted this hatchery off over here knows that this is pretty much the same exact build that he is currently going for as, as both players within one supply of each other and perhaps within one second of each other with for all of these buildings to be established. Bly now running off of one gas Sorry, and Slivko off of, running off of one gas as well. And Slivko just backing away here. Now taking a look at the strategies and taking a look at what we learned from Slivko's play in game one. Slivko is not is one player to perhaps try to execute that head fake. Now head fakes normally on, only work once as Bly will now perhaps know how to react and respond to it, not get nearly as drone heavy. So far, Bly is getting up on two queens. We'll see if we see the necessary four queens, which has become standard of late as creep tumors are very important, both as a movement speed advantage as you move out, but also more importantly as scouting. Whenever you can scout and whenever you have essentially energy that lets you scout out locations, that is always very helpful in, in being able to allow you to respond and react accordingly. All right, Banelings Nest now coming in as well. Banelings Nest being built here at the natural expansion. No one yet to establish up their own third base so a little confused at what the players are trying to do they're not really being altogether that risky i think bly is going to be a little bit more careful of balancing army and workers this time around as slivko now goes into 42 over 44 supply so far what is bly's options at this point he needs to get in more drones he needs to get a stronger economy and if he wants he could try to establish up this high ground location here zerglings are making their way down and we are seeing the overlords of slivko being used to make sure that there is no funny business funny business going on here at the natural third 51 supply compared to 44. Nine more drones now coming in from Slivko. So Slivko may be able to win this economic war uh, pretty easily as the Zerglings now engaging up against a queen and some banelings. Oh, very, very nice hit there. Taking down um, two Zerglings. Not a completely good trade, but still strong enough to really push back any aggression and perhaps deny any scouting that's going on inside.
Livco sitting at 57 over 60. Bly sitting at 52 over 52. Overlord still in the center of the map. Bly ready to go. Now finally getting up to tier 2 here. Meanwhile, let's take a look back down over here. Slivko already at tier 2. And now Bly is quickly going into a Spire. With that Spire, um, whoever normally gets that Spire first and is able to hold on in the mid game usually comes out ahead. The reason why most Zerg players do not go Hydralis. And whenever you have 10 Mutalis versus 5... At the end of the battle, you don't have 5 Mutalis on one and 0 on the other. It's more like 7 and 0 or 8 and 0. Since the Mutalis of the 10 can really focus down and deal a lot more damage to those defending Mutalis. We are going to see this third base now be established by Bly. Meanwhile, we are seeing a third base established by Slivko. Both players pretty much establishing and, and setting those builds at near simultaneous times. A 55, 41, a difference of about 15 seconds. As Overlord's spewing creep acting as a little bit of mobile defense here in the middle of the map. Bailing simply walking across on the far side. Are the Zerglings perhaps going to take down these destructible rocks? It looks like they just might as the Queen now gets up onto the high ground in order to take care of this. Zerglings now trying to come in here. It looks like a couple Banelings may perhaps find their target. No, no Banelings finding their target at all as the Roaches with a range of four just enough to detonate those Banelings. As we do see the destructible rocks are now down to 1830. Five Mutalists now being added. Those Mutalists will be there to try to shut down any map control that Slivko has with those Banelings and those Roaches. However, he will be forced to deal with the Queens of Slivko as Slivko does already have, I believe, three Queens at the moment and could still have more on the way. All right, Mutalists are now out finally for Bly. Bly with five Mutalists looking to perhaps do a bit of damage, but we already see the counter action coming in. Um, an additional Queen, Hydralis Den, and level one missile attack. Is that going to be enough? As the Overlords are all just simply getting shot down now. Another Overlord does go down. We are now seeing at 102 over 102. As the Mutas are now looking to come in. How much damage are they really going to be able to do? And here we go. Taking down one drone. Another drone does get taken down. A third drone now taken down. As the Mutalists are once again looking to back off. Zerglings might try to test the front door. Is it going to work? I do believe so. Yes. They are now inside the base. How much damage can they do? Perhaps going after a queen. The queen quickly getting surrounded inside here. Trying to protect himself next to that spore crawler. Able to slip inside there. And I believe that will be enough. Yes, that definitely was enough. All right, taking a look at this Mutalis of Bly still flying around over here on the bottom right. They able to get off a little bit of damage. Hydralis are already out from Slivko, so Bly's window of opportunity to attack with those Mutalis have pretty much been shut down. Now let's take a look at the strategy so far. Spire now coming in, Hydralis then now coming in, Infestation Pit already in, and now Fungal Growth has been completed, so both players pretty much um, very, very strong for the late game. Infestor's very good at the late game with their mass damage to mass damage um, to a group of units with its spell casting. But only time will tell. Roach is able to get off one, or sorry, uh, Infestor is able to get off one fungal growth on a group of roaches. Roach is now quickly falling as there is another fungal growth still. Infested Terrans now being hatched up there as well on the high ground. Roaches are trying to make their way in another fungal growth on Hydralis. The Hydralis should perhaps be the high priority right now since they do have higher DPS and lower hit points as well. Infestor is now looking to back away. We see 131 versus 116, a difference of 16 or 15 supply now. As both sides still looking to gear up. Alright, level 2 weapons upgrade. 
Groove Spines gearing up for Bly. Meanwhile, it looks as though Slipco has not yet started those upgrades. And I am curious as to when those upgrades will be started, if anything. And it looks like the Groove Spines of Research was already upgraded uh, many, many moments ago. As the Infestors are still looking to do a move outward. All right, we do have Burrow now about to be completed. No Burrow movement on Bly's units, though. So they will not be able to regenerate the additional regeneration until that is done. Rocha is looking to back off, go back home. Sliv coasting at 165. Acer blasting at 157 over 168. As both players are just trying to get a good feel for each other still. Now, fungal growth is going to become a key, key part of the strategy. As the fungal growth will be utilized to shut down any fast moving attacks and retreats. Slivko having a si similar strategy so far has a whole bunch of infestors, roaches, and hydralists now on the move. Up here on the high ground, roaches may be able to snipe down an infestor. Yes, one infestor does go down. Uh, are we going to see another roach perhaps get taken down? As, oh, Bly able to save one of his lower hit point roaches as the infestor now may be able to come in. No, so far these units are not grouped together. We can see Slivko now looking to establish up a third... Oh, th what, a third expansion, a fourth base here as the creep tumors are spreading across this hatchery. Infestors may be able to catch some of these units in transit. Yes, there you go. Catching some of those units in transit. Getting another cast there. And Slivko, all of Slivko's units pretty much has taken a lot of damage. As the Infestor may need, a, nope, doesn't need to back off. As another round of Roaches and almost killed. But two Hydralists were in fact destroyed there. All right, Roach is now going to go ahead and shut down Bly's expansion here at the 12 o'clock position. Will they be able to escape? That is the key question as we now see a large battle here in the center. A whole bunch of Infested Terrans have now been launched. As the Infested Terrans are looking to try to perhaps fight back, Infested Terrans do have significant DPS, a range of 10. And it looks as though many of those Roaches just simply cannot handle the sheer number of um, Infested Marines coming out from Bly. Now coming back in, Bly is seeing that 168 over Slivko's 151. There is the destruction of the hatchery here at the 3 o'clock position. It looks as though the Hydros are looking up and will end up taking down one. Um, one Infestor there. But while the units are away, could Bly perhaps just simply walk in and take the rest of the game? You can see Overloads are in position. Roaches, Hydro is now all in position as well. What is that next step from Bly? Is Bly going to perhaps try and do some sort of power play move? And perhaps take down these destructible rocks to force an engagement at the third. And if he does force an engagement at the third, whether or not he can block off the ramp with a whole bunch of hold position roaches. To fend off any sort of reinforcement. Alright, here we go. Hydralis and Roaches and Infestors making their move out. We can see that there are some Overseers in the group. Hydralis and Roaches now coming in from the backside here. Both sides just trying to get a very good strong flanking position. And here we go. Hydralis and Roaches are battling it up. And now it looks like Roaches on both sides are going to be following a beautiful fungal growth. Infested Terrans now coming in from behind from Bly. And Slivko is in trouble. Slivko now dealing with a whole bunch of Infested Terrans. And that is absolutely crazy. Roaches and Hydralis now continuing to pick apart. Infested Terran is going to perhaps take down this one particular spine crawler, And that is GG. Slivko loses game two. We are all tied up at one game apiece. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.